Hello, Jet Setters. I'm Jeb Brooks from GreenerGrats.com, and this is a podcast brought to you by two blokes who don't really know what they're doing. They're just making things up as they go along. In the Adelaide studio, I'm Dennis Bunning. Dennis is an Australian-based trip reporter with 100,000 subscribers and a great friend of mine. In case you missed it, there's a link below to our first discussion. So let's talk about it. We haven't worked out a name, have we? Oh, well, I'm assuming that we have because this is now episode two. And shouldn't yeah. you do like a big introduction? So welcome to episode two, uh, where we're wearing the same clothes. I'm drinking the same glass of wine. And Dennis is on his fourth Sri Lankan arc. So, you know, um, here we are. Here we are on... Two blokes talking rubbish. No destinations. Preparing for takeoff. There are many, many options that we can call this. But what you should do is leave a comment below with your idea about what we should call it. And by episode seven, we will whittle it down and then go back and rename them all. I I just hope that we're wearing something different by episode seven. Which airline have you not done a review on that you would love to fly? Uh, Well, I'm going to say it the way that you would. Qatar. Qatar. You haven't flown Qatar. 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 You're going to fly Qatar to Doha. I do not. I would like to fly Qatar to Doha on the way to <laughs> Adelaide. Uh, They've just announced they're back in Adelaide last, last week. Um, first flight back in. So uh, on the A350 in uh, the Q suite, it is sensational. Will your government let me in right now? No. Okay. So that's a non-starter. Yes. Yes. In the meantime, I believe somebody else did do a review on the uh, Qatar Q suite um, quite recently. So uh, if one was to Google that or uh, search it up on YouTube or even maybe go to a channel such as Dennis Bunnick Travels, they would be able to find it. It is it is the best business class out there, in my opinion. Uh, not as good as first class. I don't think it will replace first class, but it's, it is a very, very good product. You'd like it. I, I would like, what, what's yours? What, what have you not flown that you want to fly? fly? Um, I've always wanted to try Virgin Long Haul, even Virgin Atlantic or um, Virgin, uh, Virgin Australia. Virgin Australia, obviously, unfortunately, has uh, gone through administration, is now coming out the other side, and it, and it appears that um, uh, they won't be doing... The, the Long Haul International. They're, in fact, getting rid of their 777s um, and uh, their A330s. So, unfortunately, uh, those days have gone there. Um, other than that, anything and everything. The residents would be good. Oh, man. I, you know, I really don't have high hopes for that coming back. And I no. think that's, that's, that's probably my biggest regret. I, you know, and, and what I was doing, I mean, uh, reveal all the secrets, right? So, I... Every sponsorship dollar I got went mm-hmm. into an account. And that account was slowly building for the residents. And it was oh. going to be, I, I didn't know what I was going to do in that video, but it was going to be epic. I mean, it just looks like it's the ultimate. If you do what we do, if you are watching this, which means that you really like aviation and probably uh, the luxurious side of the passenger experience, like I think you would agree with the two of us when we say, Oh, we want to do that. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. It's it's that and, and, you know, having had the opportunity to fly Concorde. I never had the opportunity and, I you know, I'd love to have loved to have done it. I was on the aircraft once on a, on a like an open day at uh, Heathrow, but that would have been uh, an experience. I'm very grateful that I got to fly the Etihad um, A380 in their first class apartments. And, in fact, I'll give you another plug. Uh, I'm doing a classic uh, classic flight series at the moment because we've had some copyright issues, and the next cab off the rank for that one is actually going to be that uh, Etihad first class apartment. Um, but Etihad also, like so many other airlines, are, are going through a lot of financial difficulty. And you know, will those A380s return? Um, if they don't with Etihad, then the residence disappears, their first class apartments disappear. Um, that's a big, you know, that's been a big part of their marketing um, over the last few years, their, their sort of global positioning. Yeah, it, it, it is. 
And I think first class in general is going to look different on the other side of this. Yes. Yeah, different yeah, yeah. now, I don't know, but it's, it's just that that's such a, a niched product or niched, depending on what you want to say. Niche. It's niche. a niche. We say, what I, have you say I say niched. Niched. Niche. 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 We're going to cut this out. Probably, yeah. <laughs> niche versus niche. In-flight pajamas. I don't think I've ever in any of your videos seen you wearing in-flight pajamas. What's the story? Not crazy about them. I mean, I know that's sacrilegious. Yeah, I just, you know, I, I like, I like, I like my own clothes. I mean, eh. I like, I like my own clothes. I've I did seen one your video. In -flight pajamas are better. I did, I did one video where I had a tuxedo T-shirt. I don't even know. That, that's probably not a thing in Australia. It is uh, Wollongong. Wollongong is the, uh, is the epicenter of tuxedo t-shirts in Australia. <laughs> yeah, I got some hate for that. Um, no, I, I'm just not crazy about them. I, I, I don't know. It's not my thing. I'm, I'm more of a headphone guy. I try to be kind of quiet and subtle about that. I don't want to draw a lot of attention to my feelings about headphones. Uh, but you're yeah. obsessed with those pajamas. Well, yeah, you know, I think the difference is that, you know, from Australia, everything is long haul. At some stage, you've got to sleep. And if you're in business class and they've given you a nice drink or three or four and you've got a, a lie flat bed and they give you a pair of pajamas, it's fantastic because it keeps your clothes crease free. It makes for a much more comfortable experience. I mean, you, you really feel strongly about that. You know what? It, here's a bit of Australian culture for you. And is it is a, a less um, Kylie Minogue, right? Now, she's a singer. Um, she's in, in essence, same age as me, I believe. She, uh, her claim to fame was Neighbours. Uh, she was Charlene in Neighbours and with uh, Jason Donovan, Scott and Charlene. It was the ultimate Australian love story. Yeah, I know it. I did, I did not realise she was in it. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, this is, this is in the 80s. And what happened is that she, um, uh, Neighbours in the UK was this massive show, absolutely massive show. Um, so much so that when I was backpacking through there in 1987 in youth hostels, all the POMs, which is what we call the Brits, um, would, uh, would ask me what's happening in Neighbours because we were about six months ahead. Anyway, she then launched this singing career and uh, was affectionately known as a singing budgie uh, for, by Australians for a little while. But uh, she then went out with Michael Hutchins from uh, In Excess and um, became a megastar. Anyway, the point of the story is she flew over, when her singing career was just starting, she flew from Australia over to the UK. They hadn't told her how popular and stuff that she was there or that she would get any attention. Her manager had said, oh, yeah, no, we'll pick you up from the airport, whatever. So she comes off the flight from Australia, 24 hours, creased clothes, no makeup, looking as disheveled as all of us do when we come off a flight, and the paparazzi and everything was there, and she got hammered for it. Absolutely hammered for it. So at that point, that was a moment in my life because, you know, I had quite the thing for Charlene from Neighbours that I realised that when I jump off a plane at the other end of a long flight, I need to look my best because you never know, unbeknownst to me or to anybody, huh, I may have become famous while on that flight and there might be paparazzi there. And that's why you should always, and that could happen to you. It happened to Kylie Minogue. It could happen to you. Your optimism. I really yes. admire that in you. Yeah. And the other great thing about this is when you get to learn the backstory of something so omnipresent as your love of pajamas. I will never be able to look at you putting on pajamas, look at you wearing pajamas <laughs> again the same way uh, without hearing Kylie Minogue singing. You should be so lucky. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's, that's good. Hey, um, Kylie. Carly, if you're, if you happen to be watching this and happen to be listening to this, we could do some sort of collaboration video around in-flight pajamas. I promise not to sing because you know, nobody wants to hear me sing. Well, uh, uh, I don't think I know any of her songs. Can you? That's the, so. That's why you didn't get the. Um, I should be so lucky reference. Um, yeah, so uh, why don't you, could you, could you, maybe I've heard it. Can you give it to me? Uh, no, no, that was, uh, that was it. That was it. Um, no, 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 anyway. All right. Um, now, remember, this episode is on your channel, Jeb. 
so you've got far greater viewership than me. You've got you know close to half a million uh, subscribers these days. Um, so most people will be completely and utterly unaware of uh, what we're talking about here. So let's let's move to an aviation question, and we've got lots here. Which two cities currently not connected by a direct flight or a nonstop flight? I think that should be. Would you like to see connected? Uh, Adelaide and Wollongong, obviously. Uh, close second would be um, Adelaide and anywhere in Europe. Um, I, I don't know. What, which, what do you think? Well, uh, my answer changed, and it's Hobart <laughs> to Greensboro. <laughs> Just saying. I think there is a lot of there is a lot of traffic between uh, Greensboro and um, the rest of the world, isn't there? Well, and, and Australia. And so, but actually, the, the serious question here, um, because we both, we both live in what would be called secondary cities. You know, um, they're not major hubs for, for any airlines. So um, Adelaide, in my case, and, and Greensboro for, you, for yourself. Um, what's the impact been for Greensboro in terms of aviation access? And how long do you think it'll be before it comes back to what you had pre-COVID? Yeah, it's been it's been hard on us. I'll just highlight Delta just as an example. I mean, the same could be said for others, including Spirit, who we lost altogether. Right. Uh, but Delta was down to you know, just a few flights a day. We're back up to our normal number to Atlanta, which is seven. But we've mm -hmm. lost our service to uh, New York's LaGuardia Airport and uh, Detroit. Uh, we no longer have those flights, and I don't know when they're going to come back. I'll tell you this. There are a lot of airplanes stored here in, at PTI, and yeah. um, rumor on the street is they are not going anywhere anytime soon. Yeah. Uh, you know, as in, you know, the 2021 has been, has been bandied out about. So uh, it's, it's been pretty, pretty bad. I know you've lost a, a, a fair number of international uh, uh, flights there. Yeah, yeah, we have. Well, obviously with uh, Fortress Australia, um and uh everything being blocked um it's um pretty much all international airlines stopped flying to adelaide um and then where they were flying it was freight services only slowly starting to come back uh, but we we had emirates Eti um sorry emirates qatar um air new zealand's malaysian cathay singapore airlines um pretty much all there on a daily basis. Uh, some of them are maybe five times a week. Um, if they're flying in at all now, it's twice a week, three times, and it's uh, and right. that's it. Um, Emirates have pulled out altogether um, and have made all of their staff redundant and um, shut up shop here. So, you know, eventually you would hope that they'll come back, but this is going to take, it's going to take a long time. And, and this doesn't just apply to secondary city to Adelaide and, and Greensboro. It applies to all secondary cities, you know, globally. Uh, it's, going to it's going to take a long time for that aviation capacity to come, uh, to come back, I fear. And, and obviously with that, a hell of a lot of people have lost their jobs and uh, that it's yeah, been a bit of, it's, that's been heartbreaking as well, obviously. So let's stick on this topic and ask uh, one other question that uh, came up many times in one form or fashion. Um, and, uh, I'll just, I'll use this example, but it's, I think you'll see it's a broader question than just the way this has been posed. Um, apart from the cleaning routines and onboard service, what do you think will change most in the airline industry in the next 12 months and why? 12 months. 12, the next 12 months. I don't, here, I don't know whether we're going to be flying in 12 months from now. You know, it's 50-50 whether the Australian borders will be open 12 months from now, um, which, is, which is absolutely frightening and freaky to say. Um, domestically, and so domestically, yes, we'll be flying and, and maybe to some closer destination. And obviously, I hope very much that we will be flying um, because as a country, we're all getting cabin fever massively and, and that's starting to show in, in lots of different ways. Um, Cleanliness is the big one. Um, and, I, and I think the other big aspect, though, will be more financially and economically related in that the airlines have taken such a big hit 
that all of those nice to haves, which were maybe a bit expensive, are now going um, or will go and take a long time to come back. And that includes the, you know, the high frequencies to maybe some of these secondary cities um, and uh, yeah, some of the perks. So the wine and the, and the whiskey may not be quite as good in first class or business class, but that's okay. You know, we can live with that. Yeah, I mean, aside from the promise to get you from point A to point B and the federally required number of flight attendants and pilots, everything else is gravy. Everything else is nice to have. I, I suspect that we'll, um, we will have fewer airlines here in the U.S., mm -hmm. um, and what that looks like, I don't know, mergers, acquisitions, um, yeah. you know, closures, I, I don't know, but I, I don't think we'll have as much, uh, as many companies. Um, and I also, I also suspect that um, the most interesting part of this is how and under what conditions airlines unwind yes. the rules. So I feel like, and, and I, I'll preface this by saying I am not a scientist. I am not an expert in all this. Um, I'm, I'm like a guy who is good at sitting in a seat and talking about what it's like to sit in the seat. That's my expertise here. But I do feel like airlines got an unfair rap in this whole thing. I think that flying is a pretty clean and safe thing to do. Uh, the air is, is filtered. Um, you're not doing a lot of talking Addy people, especially if you're wearing a face covering. I mean, you know, I, I, you know, in, in my, uh, I made a video about um, in-flight etiquette and I said, nobody wants to sit next to the, you know, uh, Chatty McChatterson, um, unless it's you, Dennis, and then we all want to sit next to you. But really, I mean, like it's, it's a relatively um, solo activity, but for whatever re reason, uh, in the same way that so many people are afraid to fly, uh, despite just how safe it is, under normal circumstances, it got an unfair rap. The CEO of Southwest Airlines, Gary Kelly, has, has said this far more articulately than I, than I but I think he's right. Um, yes. So I, it'll be interesting to see how the rules and regulations unwind and what rules and regulations stick with us forever. Uh, the fact yeah. that we sometimes still have to take our shoes off at TSA is the result of one action years ago that most of us have forgotten about, but, but the, the legacy of that continues. That'll be interesting. Yeah, yeah, I, I think so. I, th I think eventually the world will be back to normal. What I fear is, you know, when it does get back to normal, if somebody somewhere gets a cold or gets a, picks up a virus that is unknown, you know, how is, how is the whole world going to panic? You know, and we, and we saw that with various other sort of major events and stuff around the world. Um, so there will be that level of fear. But I, I think eventually it'll find that it'll find that equilibrium. But I, I do agree with you. The airlines received far too much uh, criticism than uh, than was probably justified when they themselves were going through a really, really difficult period of time. Um, but th but that just I think that's a manifestation or a, or a result of the fact that you know. We all love our holidays or our vacations, as you guys say, you know, and we love flying. And um, you see these, you know, tons and tons of steel and metal sort of hurtle off into the sky. And wow, that's, that's incredible. Um, so there is an interest. And, um, you know, as I say, there's one thing worse than being talked about. And it's not being talked about. That's true. Yes. So they... Um, uh, yeah, but airlines will recover. Yeah, I've got a question for you. This is from uh, Daniel in the Antip in Antipodes. How widespread is membership of the Mile High Club? Based on a certain Singapore first class video uh, that one of us made, there's a chance that 50% of this, the people on your screen right now uh, are members. I, I, I can't know for sure. Okay, we, don't, we, we can't kiss and tell. <laughs> and if you haven't watched Dennis's Singapore uh, first class uh, A380 video, the new first class, that is probably, I would say that's the best YouTube trip report out there. Like it's, you got to watch that one. Thank you. That was, that was the funnest one to make. It, it really was, uh, yeah.
and, and that was, you know, we spoke before about the residents and, um, you know, some of those iconic things. That Singapore Airlines first class suites, the new ones in the, in the A380, that's out of this world. That's the, you, you're actually, you're flying with, but you, you pinch yourself because you don't actually feel that you're on a plane. Uh, yeah. and that's and that's the magic that's that magic of aviation there's only very few experiences like that in the sky and I'm not talking about my high club or anything like this I'm talking about the entire flight experience um, and that's what we all want to come back at the end of all of uh, all of this yes and and the mile high club too <laughs> thanks for watching <laughs> between now and the next time See you in the sky. Bye.